types of hemoglobin and hemo hemoglobin pathways. Hemoglobin A. In adult human, the most common hemoglobin type after birth is hemoglobin A. It makes up 95 to 98% of hemoglobin in adults and you have seen in, in various lectures, various uh, times that it consists of two alpha chains and two beta chains. Each is made up of 141 and 146 amino acid residues respectively. Subunits are denoted by alpha 2 and beta 2. Here you can see beta chain 146 amino acid, alpha chain 141 amino acid, there is a heme group and the red spot is the iron. The subunits are structurally similar and about the same size. Each subunit has a molecular weight of about 16,000 nanometers. And while studying the hemoglobin structure, the total weight is 64,000 daltons. And at this, at that point, I told you that each subunit is uh, each subunit weight is 16,000 daltons. One gram per dl of hemoglobin is equal to 0.1551 millimoles per liter. Hemoglobin A2. It is composed of two alpha chains and two delta chains. It is a normal variant of hemoglobin A. That is, it is different from the hemoglobin and it is encoded by the gene HPA2. So the gene which codes the hemoglobin A2 is HPA2. You know that protein is synthesized by the DNA, DNA forms RNA, whatever information it is present in the DNA, it, it is trans, uh, through transcription, it is transferred to mRNA and the information which is present on mRNA is translated into the type of protein. It is found in small quantity in human plasma. Delta chain synthesis begins late in the third dumpster. In adults, it makes up 2 to 3 percent of the hemoglobin found in adults. It contains ferrocyanide group. It is very important. That is the hemoglobin A2. It contains the ferrocyanide group. Now here you can see the structure. A and C, pink and brown, are the alpha chain. B and D are the delta chain. And it contains cyanide group, ferrocyanide group 1, 2, 3, 4. And then here you can see the heme molecules which are attached. So for each chain, it contains one ferrocyanide and one heme molecule. And in this way, you can see the structure of the hemoglobin A2. Infant hemoglobin is the major hemoglobin present during gestation. In human infants, the hemoglobin molecule is made up of two alpha and two gamma chains. These genes, they differ from each other, alpha, beta, gamma, on the basis of the amino acid composition. The gamma chains are gradually replaced by the beta chains as the infant grows because you know that normal adult hemoglobin, it contains alpha and the beta chains. So the gamma chains as the infant grows, it is replaced by the beta chains. The four polypeptide chains are bound to each other by salt bridges, hydrogen bonds, and hydrophobic bonds. Here you can see the different types of the hemoglobin seen in adults. So hemoglobin A contains two alpha, two beta chain. Hemoglobin A2, it contains two alpha, two delta chains. 
hemoglobin F, fetal hemoglobin, it contains two alpha, two gamma chains. And this is the distribution of, hemo, hem, uh, of hemoglobin in human blood. Adult hemoglobin H, it contains all beta chains and the part hemoglobin, it contains four gamma chains. No alpha chains are present. So the infant hemoglobin, it constitutes approximately 60 to 80 percent of the total hemoglobin in the full term newborn. In the full term newborn, 60 to 80 percent is the fetal hemoglobin. In individual without, without hemoglobin disease, hemoglobinopathies, it is almost completely replaced by the adult hemoglobin, hemoglobin A, by approximately 6 to 12 months of age. Yani koi hemoglobin ki synthesis mein, us bache mein koi agar bimari na ho, koi deficiency na ho, so it is replaced by uh, the beta chains approximately 6 to 12 months of age and it amounts to less than 1% of the total hemoglobin in healthy adults. The healthy adults, they normally contain this hemoglobin but it is 1% of the total hemoglobin in the healthy adults. In hemoglobin pathies, the level of hemoglobin F can be elevated in person with sickle cell disease or beta thalassemia. So if there is some problem with the hemoglobin, some disease of the hemoglobin, then the level of the hemoglobin will be rise. And in which condition? In thalassemia and sickle cell disease. The patient of these two diseases, they have high level of hemoglobin F. Otherwise, the hemoglobin F is replaced by the adult hemoglobin A as soon as a child become, uh, reaches the age of 6 to 12 months. There are more than 350 types of abnormal hemoglobin, but the most common are hemoglobin D. This type of hemoglobin is present in some sickle cell disorders. Hemoglobin C, you can see here, it contains two alpha chain, one beta chain, and two C2 chains. Another variant due to the variation in the beta chain. Beta chain ki variation hoti or is vada se C2 ban this, uh, this variant causes a mild chronic hemolytic anemia and this type of hemoglobin cannot carry oxygen in a proper way. Variant form that cause diseases hemoglobin D Punjab, alpha 2, beta D2 genes. Again remember that these genes they differ from each other in the amino acid composition. It is also a variant form of hemoglobin. It is so named because of its higher prevalence in the Punjab region of India and Pakistan and it is developed as a response to selective type of malaria. Hemoglobin H. All the chains are the beta chains. A variant form of hemoglobin formed by the tetramer of beta chains and which may be present in variants of alpha thalassemia. That is the thalassemia patients may have this form of the hemoglobin. The alpha chains are missing and all the chains are the beta chains. Hemoglobin part, all the four chains are the gamma chains. A variant form of hemoglobin formed by a tetramer of gamma chains which may be present in thalassemia. So hemoglobin H and hemoglobin bar both are present in the patients of alpha thalassemia. Hemoglobin E. Here you can say again there is a variation in the beta chain and E2 is formed. This variant causes a mild chronic hemolytic anemia. 
hemoglobin S, a very a variant form of hemoglobin found in people with sickle cell disease. There is a variation in the beta chain gene causing a change in the properties of the hemoglobin which result in the sickling of the red blood cell. We'll just see that what change in the amino acid composition occur in beta chain which leads to the sickle cell anemia. Hemoglobin AS, a heterozygous form causing sickle cell twin with one adult gene and one sickle cell gene. One adult gene and one the sickle cell gene is present. Hemoglobin SC disease, a compound heterozygous form with one sickle cell gene and other encoding hemoglobin C. Hemoglobin Hodg the Hopkins 2, a variant form of hemoglobin that is sometimes viewed in combination of hemoglobin S to produce sickle cell disease. So you can write on one side of your register the type of hemoglobin and the other you can write the composition in the other column and in the third column you can write down the diseases resulting from the type of the hemoglobin. Sickle cell anemia. The biological activity of hemoglobin depend upon the amino acid sequence. I am not going into the detail because it is not the field of biochemistry but since there is a change in the amino acid composition so I am dealing with this. In normal hemoglobin at position 6 glutamic acid is present whereas in the sickle cell hemoglobin this glutamic acid is replaced by valine. Valine contains the non-polar side chains and these side chains through hydrophobic interactions they polymerize which results in the precipitation of the hemoglobin within the RBC. So this all the masha valine ki vajasi hota hai. Valine contains the non-polar side chain which these non-polar side chains, if they polymerize, they form a polymer, they combine with one another and through hydrophobic interactions and this leads to the presentation of hemoglobin within the RBC. Here you can see the normal uh, red blood cell and here you can see the sickle cell shape that is a crescent line. Presentation of hemoglobin within the RBC give the RBC sickle cell shape. Due to this, there is high rate of hemolysis and persons suffer sickle cell anemia. RBC usually live for about 120 days before they need to be replaced. But the sickle cell usually die in 10 to 20 days, leaving a shortage of red blood cell anemia. So normally, how many days are RBCs? 120 days. Sickle cell is 10 to 20 days. Without enough red blood cell, our body cannot get the oxygen and feel fatigued. And you have seen in the last lecture how many functions the hemoglobin perform. So all these functions will not be carried out. Because the half-life of the RBC it, it, it is decreased. Normal cell and here you can see the sickle cell. And here you can see, just follow my pointer, that the sickle cell RBCs, they are clogging the vessels here. And therefore the blood flow becomes difficult because they are blocking the vessel in this way. Episodes of pain, periodic episodes of pain develop when sickle shape, uh, shape red blood cell, they block the blood flow. Just now you have seen that how they block the blood flow through tiny blood vessels to your chest, abdomen and joints. Pain can also occur in the bones. Painful swelling of hands and feet. The swelling is caused by the sickle shape red blood cell blocking the blood flow to the hands and the feet. Just now you have seen how the blood flow is blocked by the sickle cell uh, shaped RBCs. 
frequent infections sickle cell can damage the spleen that fight infections leaving the body vulnerable to infections delayed growth rbc provide your body with oxygen and nutrients you need for growth a shortage of healthy rbc can show slow growth in infants and children and delay puberty in teenagers so since they do not get the proper oxygen supply and the proper nutrient supply therefore their growth is delayed vision problem tiny blood vessels that supply your eyes may be plugged may be blocked with sickle cell and this can damage the retina